Hello and welcome to Green Building Bites presented by Green Building Alliance. I'm Leslie Montgomery from the Green Building Alliance team. And in today's bite, I'll bring you a conversation from Matthew Craig, Executive Director of the Young Preservationist Association of Pittsburgh. Matthew and I are going to talk about the alignments between green building and historic preservation. And he'll share some insights from the YPA's most recent top 10 list of historic preservation opportunities. Let's meet Matthew now. Hi, Matthew, thanks for joining me today. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me onto your nice program. Well, I'm very excited to talk to you. I have so many questions. I'm so excited to have you here to talk about your organization. And I just wanted you to start by talking about the Young Preservationist Association of Pittsburgh and what your mission is. The Young Preservationist Association was started 20 years ago this year by Dan Holland. And his interest was connecting young people and engaging them in historic preservation the same way he saw people, young people especially, connecting to environmental causes. So there is this, right off the, the bat, there is this connection between what was happening in the natural environment and what he had hoped would happen in the built environment. We've carried this idea of empowerment ever since the beginning of the organization that, you know, it's, it's about inviting young people to a, a seat at the table. But what I have learned in the execution of this idea is that empowerment is not something that you give to somebody. Empowerment is something that the person can rightly claim because everybody has the right to have a seat at the table. And all we're doing here is reminding everybody, you have a right to have your voice be heard. And so if we can be a microphone, uh, I love to use the analogy of amplification of ideas and voices. So we just try to be an amplifier for young people and their voices. But in historic preservation, there is a responsibility of, of sharing the information because the ideas can be complicated, the stories can be involved. So we have to be stewards of the stories. We have to share the information and hopefully you can create a conveyor belt so that the people that you share the information to, they can then share the information to someone who can then share the information. And, and it's a loop that you try to create. I'd love to hear in terms of your role at YPA, um, what inspires you most and what excites you most about historic preservation as it relates to all of your past experience and passions? I always used to say that Joseph had the coat of many colors and I was the man of many hats. And what inspires me most about historic preservation as it relates to my own background is storytelling. I really relate to the stories about these places that we get involved in. And it's not just the past stories, it's the future stories that can take place if these buildings can be restored and returned to the service that they are meant to have in the community. So uh, some of your folks might know that I was the host for many years of the Allegheny Front which was a, a radio program about the environment. And what was curious about this, and I didn't know this at first, but when I was long enough in, in my tenure at the Allegheny Front, what I noticed was when you discuss the environment, what you're really discussing was the destruction of the environment or the potential destruction of the environment. And I was actually coming at it from a place of appreciation an appreciation of nature and how it, if you take a couple steps back and you think I stepped into this role as the executive director for the Young Preservations Association in 2015, as an idea to continue teaching younger people, but really engaging young, younger people so that they can then become um, our future replacement as we, as we work into this. And I guess what really inspires me about this work is to honor the, the, the dedicated men and women who built our landscape through their sweat and their good work. You know, you, you see the, the craftsmanship on some of these buildings. 
And it's not hard for me to, to witness in my own mind's eye, the men and women who did it. One of, almost one of my favorite topics to ever cover, you know, in, in my time here at Green Building Alliance is the aligning goals and priorities of historic preservation and sustainable building. I would just love to hear from your perspective, what are some of the neatest ways that those two things overlap? And what are some of the challenges that people face if they're pursuing both green building and historic preservation? Well, there's a local architect named Rob Fapman, and I'm gonna be quoting him on this line. He firmly believes that the greenest building is one that's already built. There has to be this sense about uh, this balance between how we're able to manage the resources that we have versus the resources that we're hoping to create. And you would hope that lessons learned would be applied to the buildings as, as we go forward. But there really is so much that we can still utilize from what came before. And I think it's just finding that sweet spot so that we're not just erasing the really important fabric of our region, but we do allow enough space so that the innovative techniques can be incorporated. But I think if you do examine them piece by piece and you look at the, the previous built environment, you'll do find they do have really very high green building uh, purposes right in them. They're, 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 they're breathable buildings. And I think that there are still a lot of lessons that we can learn from those who came before us. Every year, YPA puts out a list of the top 10 opportunities for historic preservation. And as I understand it, I think it was described as opportunities because they could really be serving their communities if they were saved. What is the process for developing that list? And is it hard to narrow it down to just 10 opportunities every year? That list is from community nominations. So we ask those folks all around the region to nominate specific buildings and those come in and we collect them and then we curate them. And we start to look for a sort of a larger picture that we can promote. Our top 10 list is meant as a springboard for the conversations that should be happening. And we're hoping that it is a way for us to create that conversation and to get people to look at these places with fresh eyes. We are conducting this conversation and having this discussion during Black History Month in February. And one of the top 10 opportunities that was listed for 2021 was the opportunity to identify um, sites of the Underground Railroad in our region and create signage for them. So can you talk about um, that particular opportunity? And I think I remember hearing that they could use assistance from the community. So if there are other ways that people could get involved to help out with that. Yes, that is wonderful to have a chance to talk about the, the Underground Railroad sites. A lot of them have been noted and marked, but not all of them. And so a big part of our DNA is preserving the stories. And as I mentioned earlier, that, you know, that's a big interest for me is the, the storytelling. So we want to make sure that we can capture the stories while we're still able to. And we want to make sure that we're able to uh, identify the places around the region. Uh, and a lot of them have been lost, but not all of them. And so we want to be able to gather any information that's in our power to do, which is why we want to reach out to other folks in the community so that they can engage and let us know what they might know. And, you know, it's tough if you try to put out a definitive list and there's somebody who reads it and says, oh, geez, I wish they would have asked me. We are asking. So if you know anybody, if you know yourself, please reach out to us. Uh, youngpreservationist.org and uh, let us know what you might know so that we can save these stories. You know, our, our motto from the very beginning was give life to history. So we don't want to look at these ideas and stories like they're cold and they're dead and they're in the past. We want them to be part of what we carry forward. I only have one question left for you based on our conversation. Why do you do what you do? I love that question. And the answer is, 
I want to try to help fix what's broken. That's what I want to do. So it's about trying to find innovative ways to move forward. You know, we're working on this project uh, in McKeesport, the, the, the old Penn McKee Hotel, and we're by no means guaranteed success here. But with, by getting grants from the EPA and the uh, state ISRP, which is Industrial Sites Repurpose Program, we were able to bring in with our partner, uh, Doug Scowron of DJS Ventures, we were able to bring in $980,000 to help save that building. That's a lot of resources from a very unusual place for historic preservation. So it's about trying to find innovative solutions to very vexing, difficult problems. And that's what it's about. So the idea would be, and this is my dream, that some years from now, some people will be in these places that we helped move forward. They won't have any idea that I or YPA had anything to do with it. But if they're sitting there and they're thinking, well, how nice it is to be here, that would be my thanks. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for sharing your, your purpose and, and your background and all the details that go into the work you do at YPA and just sharing some highlights from the list. I really appreciate it. Well, in your position, I can see a great deal of humility, but what you do is so important and we're very thankful for the Green Building Alliance and the work that you all do.